I don't want you to date me just because you find Asians attractive, but right. also don't tell me that you don't date Asians. That's not right. going to do anything yeah. for this interaction it's that we're having. Absolutely not going to help. I don't really identify or ascribe to just one specific gender presentation. My gender is kind of like an ongoing project and an ongoing dialogue. My pronouns are she and her. I don't switch. I'm never anything different on specific days. Whenever I, I am in new spaces and people ask me, you know, what are my pronouns, I say they, them, he, him, she, her. I, you literally cannot misgender me. My pronoun is they, them. I don't want to be lumped into male or female. And growing up for me, I always identified as almost like neither. I came out, I think it was my senior year of high school. I told everybody at the dinner table. I could just imagine my parents being like, okay, Jensen, like the food's getting cold. But they were kind of just like, yeah, sounds about right. They were just like, you know, we we're gonna love you regardless. I saw the movie Blue is the Warmest Color. <laughs> and I was like, mm-hmm, message received. And I wrote this essay like immediately afterwards. I played the trailer for the movie to oh my, my family God. and then I made them all read the essay with me while I just sat there. I thought it was gonna be fine. I was so like, yeah, this is gonna be what it is. I'm coming out, I'm doing this thing and then just bawled. I hit public school in 10th grade when I was like, maybe I'm a little gay, but I'm not sure. I was like, mom, I don't think I'm straight. She's like, oh no, it's just a phase. We never talked about it again. <laughs> So I came out in high school first to my friends and my peers. I remember one of my teachers, who was actually my math teacher, and he was Asian. He was like, Sam, no, you're not gay, and, and God loves you. I didn't know how to challenge him other than just exist. And it was a hard time for me because I was going through, like almost took my life. And I think especially being queer and Asian and having to like uphold not only the standards of like being what it meant to be Asian, but also always having to choose which identity I want to fight for. When I'm seeking out community in Asian American spaces, I'm too queer or I'm too non-binary. It's really hard to find these spaces that sort of coalesce all my different identities together. I rely on what I've learned as an Asian American to foster community as a queer person. The sort of perception that I give off most of the time when I am meeting new people is that of somebody who is an Asian man. And so that already has like so much things to unpack yeah. within itself, like Western concepts of masculinity, this inherent femininity that Asian people possess. I, as a queer, non-binary, Chinese-American femme, just don't date white people anymore. <laughs> I need someone to be eye level with me about so many different issues and unfortunately I think when it comes to like romance we have this very colonized notion of like what a beautiful and incredible and like worthy of love partner is and what I've realized is like a cis slim eurocentrically beautiful white person is like not the like thesis of beauty and is not like the ultimate version of like what we should aspire to or aspire to want. That's a big thing for me because that means that I love myself better. My first date mate uh, was not Asian, but uh, after a few months, I realized they had an Asian fetish. I don't want you to date me just because you find Asians attractive, but right. also don't tell me that you don't date Asians. That's not right. gonna do anything yeah. for this interaction it's that we're having. absolutely not gonna help. And also don't date me as a non-binary person to like prove your wokeness or like Ooh, prove how like yeah. progressive you are about gender. Ooh. It sucks when you learn it too late. Like you gotta go back and be like, this ex looks like me. This ex looks like Constance Wu. This ex looks like Gemma Chan. And you're like, wait a minute. There's a, there's a. <laughs> you love crazy rich Asians. <laughs> and I'm only two of those things. Yeah. <laughs> Being queer and Asian is really difficult and hard because there aren't very many representations of queer Asians out there. Growing up, I felt like I was always looking for folks to look up to. I feel like with this sort of Asian wave that people are calling it with, you know, crazy rich Asians, oh, fresh off the boat, to all the boys I loved before, I think we are just beginning to get a scope of what it means to be somebody of the Asian diaspora. We need darker skin Asians, we need South Asians, we need disabled Asians, working class Asians, because we are infinitely complex, so we need all that representation. Yeah.